Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a sheet load of clear cards using the December 2020 printable. I hope you'll stick around and see how they're made. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I know after some of my past videos where I make clear cards that some of you have been inspired to try clear card stock for yourself. So in order to show you other ways I could use it, I thought I would start a monthly series where I make a sheet load of cards using clear card bases. If this is something that you enjoy today and would like to see continue, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. I thought this would be one more way to stretch those supplies you may already have and to see a little variation on the recent sheet load. If you haven't yet downloaded your free printable, I will link the video where I tell you how to grab this in the description box below. As always, it's free to subscribers of my channel. In front of me are most of the supplies that I'll be using today, but if I bring in anything later on, I will be sure to tell you in that voiceover. As always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get those answered just as soon as I can. For my sentiments today, I will be using this set from Sweet and Sassy Stamps. The name of it is Faith. I will probably end up using the six larger sentiments so I can fill that area just a little bit better. I will of course be using the free printable where it shows the sketch and supply list and the cutting guides. I got out some scraps of gold foil paper. And of course, if you're going to make clear cards, you need clear cardstock. So I got out five sheets of the clear cardstock. For my pattern papers, I pre selected three from the Die Cuts with a View Navy Florals set. I chose this pretty pink and blue floral piece, and I just love those gold accents, and that is why I chose the gold foil scraps that I just showed you. I also have a pink and white polka dotted pattern piece. And then finally, this blue piece, it kind of looks like a sky or just a watercolor wash. Let's get crafty! Before I get into the cutting, which will be the first part of my process, I wanted to explain to you a little bit how I usually go about turning a sketch into a clear card. Now with clear cards, you know, you can put stuff on the inside and on the outside and it allows for what looks like a lot of layers and dimension, but because that card base is see-through, it doesn't add a whole lot of bulk. I usually try to figure out which elements can go on the inside and which ones I want on the front. For the December sketch, on the inside, I will be putting PP piece A, or the large background, and I will be putting pattern paper piece C. Now, because there won't be much room for a personal message if I just hid it behind like pattern piece C, I am actually going to turn that piece into a card. So I will have a card within a card for today's projects, but I'll explain that a little bit to you more later on. Then on the front, I will be putting the image or sentiment, the little scallop border piece, and then pattern paper piece B. To get started today, I'm going to be showing you how I cut some of my papers. The first things I cut are those scraps of gold foiled paper, and I cut these into pieces that were three and a half inches wide by one inch tall. After I cut that first piece, I realized that it was pretty hard to hold this down and cut when I was going for that one inch mark. So I got out a piece of scotch blue removable tape to temporarily hold that in place while I cut that down to one inch tall. Now this same piece of tape can be used over and over again until I have cut all of these scraps down. Next, I got out my clear cardstock and I cut and folded these for card bases. I cut each of the pieces in half at five and a half inches and then just folded those down using the side of my trimmer, helping me keep that in place. 
Now the great thing about this is it's easy to cut with your regular paper trimmer and you can fold it by hand. I do it, go ahead and get out a bone folder and just reinforce that fold. Now if you're interested in finding out more about my clear cardstock, I do have a Q&A video that I will link in the description box below. Now this next part is when the real alternative comes in from the original process video for December. I'm going to be cutting down pieces of white cardstock to be that inner card. Because piece C itself is four and a quarter inches wide by two and a half inches tall, I'm going to be cutting down my white cardstocks to four and a quarter inches wide by five inches tall. That way when I fold these in half, it's the same final size as piece PPC. And finally for the cutting, I cut down all three of my pattern paper pieces per the instructions on the cutting guides. Because I did already show you exactly how I did this in that original process video, I will just skip that part and show you my final cut pieces. After everything was cut, I got out my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper and I used the quarter inch side to round the top right corners of the pattern paper piece C and the card base. I ended up punching two of the pattern paper pieces at a time and then just one of the card bases until I have all of those complete. I almost forgot that not all of the cutting was done. I still need to cut down my pieces for my sentiment. Now in the original cutting instructions, it calls for a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. But because I have tons of scraps that would work for this, I just got some of those out and cut it down to the size that was needed, which was two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Once those were all cut down, I then got out that corner chomper again and I rounded the top two corners. Next, I did a little bit more punching. I brought in my scallop border punch and I punched the top edge, which now it looks like it's the bottom edge, of each of my gold foil pieces. Now it's time to do some stamping. I used Gina K Designs in the navy ink because in the pattern papers I chose, there was some navy blue. I will be stamping my sentiments toward the top center of each piece of paper because some of that will be covered up by that gold scallop strip. Again, most of this was covered in that original process video. I chose one of the sentiments, I got that place, and then I used that grid on the lid to make sure that it was straight left to right. Then I inked it up and got it stamped. I continued this same process using various sentiments from the set until I had nine pieces with the sentiment on it. Once all of the stamping was done, I started putting my pattern paper piece C on the front of my inner cards. You do see there that when I'm aligning it to place it down, that I start with that rounded edge. That's just because if any don't line up exactly, I can cut off the other sides without having to get my corner chomper back out. Now it's time to put together the quote unquote card kits. What I do is I go through and I gather the three pieces for each card, making sure that each piece is a different pattern. Once that's ready, it's time to start putting these cards together. The first thing I do is put adhesive on the back of pattern paper piece A, and then this gets centered on the inside of the card base. Next, adhesive goes on the back of that inner card, and then I place this on the lower left corner of that pattern paper piece. Now the rest of the pieces will go onto the card front, but first I need to put my scallop piece on the back of the pattern paper strip, and then I add this to the bottom of the card front, but I align it with the same border as the pattern paper piece on the inside. Finally, I put adhesive on the back of my sentiment and I slip that in behind the gold foil strip. And here's a look at one of the cards finished. Mm -hmm. 
I followed this same process for all nine cards and then it was time to add a little bling. I got out my glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'm using the transparent slash gold today and I added three of those to the front of each card. And depending on how the pattern paper was arranged kind of helped me decide where to put the glitter dots. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this sheet load of clear cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.